Okay, today's Tuesday, June the 1st, Tuesday, June 1, 2021. Summer's right around the corner. It's already warming up. Could it be that planetary, <laughs> planetary warming? My name is Alex. I'm your host for another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast powered by Incorporating Associates. If you're not following us on Instagram, do that. It's the Corporate Cowboys page. You could also subscribe to our Patreon. That's Corporate Cowboys Podcast. And as well, uh, just send in donations. Keep this operation non-profit. Um... Just wanted to uh, kick it back and forth, spitball a little bit about what it means to know your place. What it means to know my place. And uh, I may or may not address this to you, the listener. I feel like a lot of these episodes... uh, I mean, they are for catharsis, but at the same time, it's like I'm speaking to myself and uh, convincing myself that I have no other options but to go corporate, (laughs) but to be a corporate cowboy. It's the future. It's the future. And uh, if we don't mind the future, then the future won't give a fuck about us. The future will necessarily leave us behind. So, I have to know my place. I have to know where I fit in. I have to know my role in not even the grand scheme of things. Just the scheme of things. Because acting like there are various schemes kind of uh, takes away the tracks if you will, from what is the general scheme of things, the overarching principles in nature, in humanity, in corporate. So I have to know where I fit in. I have to know what my role is. I have to know what it is I'm good at, what I am capable of, what I am willing or not willing to do for compensation. (laughs) Whether or not I will sell my soul or I won't. Whether I will sell out or not. All that, all of it goes into determining where we belong where we fit in, whether or not it's hierarchical, whether or not it's egalitarian. If I serve a support role, you better know that I'm going to be the best, I'm I'm going to be the best support person available. It's about putting forth your best effort in whatever you do. It's about putting forth my best effort. Again, I'm, I'm not going to address the listener on this one. I'm pretty much talking to myself for now. And uh, a lot of this material was covered between um, associates of mine. And so I'm working on my own arguments on how to propose them on how to go about um, placing them yeah pretty much placing them in front of uh, or, or leaving them leaving them in front of my associates so that my associates are left with something that is thought provoking something that is logically sound and rational something that leaves them thinking damn Alex was right 
or Alex is coming with that heat. <laughs> Alex is coming with that fire. Where I may, I'm in, I'm an aggregation. How do I, how do I word that? I'm a aggregate. I am an aggregate of experiences. I'm a, I'm an accumulation of life and world experience. You know, there's some educational, some academic mixed into that. And from it, we get a sense of professionalism. We get some professional demeanor. Because professionals aren't just... I don't want to say they're not just born, but professionalism is a constant development. It's, it's real time. It's development in real time. There's some leaders, there's some individuals in leadership positions who are not professional in the least. They perceive themselves as bosses. And yet there are some who we might identify as being uh, lower ranking, lesser ranking, subordinates, if you will, subordinates, subordinates, if you will. And yet they have qualities that would make them eligible to be a leader, to be a boss. The kind of boss you, the kind of boss I would be willing to support. I would be willing to work under in a support role. Yeah, they exist. Alex isn't the end all be all. Corporate cowboys are not the end all be all when it comes to professional relations. You have to know your role. You have to slow your role. You got to you got to do it slow. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. You have to be good at what you do. And in that way, you have to identify what it is you are good at and what it is I have to identify what it is I am good at and where in my professional skill set I am lacking in order to complement with an outside associate or supplement because I might be in a position where I might be uh, the right hand to somebody. I might be second in command, if you will. And if I'm on my toes sufficiently, but I rely on them to do all the talking, say I am in a support role, and I'm relying on them to do all the talking, to do the negotiating, to primarily to uh, to do the hustling, if you will. I'm just there for a support role again. But if they should happen to slip up, if I'm on my P's and Q's, dotting my I's, crossing my T's, then I can pick up exactly where they left off. If they have to catch a breath, then I could sneak in with one or two shots. That's what it means by, by being... By... By being part of a cohesive team where there are no blank spaces because your team won't allow there to be blank space. My team won't allow there to be dead air. Somebody's always doing something. Somebody's always interacting, exchanging. It's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. It really is. When everyone on the team knows the role they're supposed to fill, the objectives that are supposed to be... How do I say this? The objectives that are universal 
to the organization, that are universal to just that project, everyone is on the same page, then I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. I know I'm serving with a circle of leaders. I know I'm serving with a circle of supporters. I know I am serving with a group of killers. Some fucking corporate cowboy shit. We are the end all be all. Not just me individually. You gotta know where you fit in. I have to know where I fit in. And again, that takes active, it takes working actively in assessing my situation, just being aware, situational awareness, moving tactfully and logically so that my team knows when to step in. If I have to fall back for whatever reason, I have to catch my breath I won't be afraid to do so. I don't think I'm going to get hit from behind because I know my team is going to step up and shoot when they need to, just like I would. Why? Because (laughs) I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Yes, I'm a shooter, but I'm also a professional. So yeah, I mean, like, I'm I'm hungry. Don't get me wrong. I'm fucking hungry. I, I want to be shooting. But I'm professional enough to know my role. If I'm secondary, I'm not going to come up shooting first. I'm not going to waste. I'm not going to waste myself in a primary position when I'm already dependent on someone else to be holding down that role. I.e. my superior, my supervisor, my my delegee, my delegatee. My delegatee? Yeah, my delegatee. Is that it? Dele- delegatee? Delegatee. Yeah. Delegatee. Because we delegate amongst ourselves. We know what we're good at. We know what we're not. We know what... We, we know where we are... Um, how do I say? Not strong. But that's not to say we're not weak. Right? So we might be exactly the same. It's just that day we decided to flip a coin. And, All right, then. You shoot first, motherfucker. Fucking. <laughs> it's your day. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little bit of jealousy and all, but I'm a professional. I'm a professional. I'll stick to my role. I'll stick to the plan. I'll stick to being second. Why? Because and, and it, it ain't even going to get to the point of me. Oh, I, I wish... This motherfucker in in first place would, you know, fall back a little bit so I could bust my thing. No, 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 no. It's going to be if they require, if they require the backup, if they need the additional help. Because, I mean, you're still watching this motherfucker go to the gym, go to work, do the heavy lifting. You're still watching them work. Later on, y'all can critique one another over some beers, over some food. It could be celebratory. It could not be. It, you know, it could be uh, recuperation of some kind. But just going over what happened, going uh, comparing it to comparing and contrasting it according to how the plan was laid out, and critiquing one another, giving each other constructive feedback. That's always fun. That's always smart. Crack a couple jokes. <laughs> Break a couple balls, you know? Breaking some bowels. At the end of the day, you're one and the same. Both corporate cowboys, both professionals, both actively developing one another to be even better the next time you go to flip that coin. (laughs) You never know, it might be your turn in the driver's seat. And you want a navigator that knows what you are doing because they've done it, that knows where you are going because it's where they would have pushed it, it's where they would have moved it, 
it's where they were ha- it's where they would have oriented and, and directed the interaction you want a navigator who wasn't afraid to drive who wasn't afraid to bust who wasn't afraid to bust first but is disciplined enough to know their role to know their place in the general scheme of things otherwise <laughs> otherwise work would never get done but you're just gonna roll in with a fucking bunch of shooters everybody busting come on come on there's, there's gotta be some formality some formal exchange some observances some form of mutual respect diplomacy if you will in order for uh, in order for professionals to work together it's not hard I mean for some it, it is hard the self control aspect of it the discipline you know nipping at the reins biting biting at the bit they want to let off shots but they, they got to know the role they have to know what position it is they're playing that day that hour that second again this is this is all in real time because the moments the one in in first place the moments the leader should fall back for cover of some kind or requires cover of some kind then it's up to the second place second in command or third in command to step the fuck up lay down some covering fire of some kind direct direct the maneuver navigate navigate and maneuver it's fun it it really is Um, working in a team leading a team supporting a team it's it's all it's all fun it's all in good health it's all in uh, it's all fair it's all fair especially when the work is righteous especially when you can come away with it knowing you're making business better you don't have to make the world better you just have to make business better Business will take care of you. Business will take care of the world. Because business is the interaction, the interaction between peoples. And while we want to make it as fair as possible, we want to make it as open as possible, we want to make it comparatively con- uh, constructive as possible, you know, taking, uh, taking advantage but what is it? Um, making use of comparative advantage in order to construct better business relations. It's necessary to get your hands dirty. And in that sense, your world won't get better. You're going to be going through hell. <laughs> You're going to be going through hell to make business better. But uh, if if you're fucking broken. Nah, let me take that back. If you you are mentally equipped. There you go. It's the opposite. It's, It's not the opposite, but it's the equivalent. If you're mentally equipped to turn hell into something better then you're not at all far from being a corporate cowboy. Because that's what it takes. Damn. Well, here's to a good June. Take care.